Good morning, pilgrims on day 16 on the Chicago Hen Road, a day full of different types of motor transportation. We're starting with a bicycle coming back from the supermarket just to get a breakfast. I have a ferry boat to catch at 7:10 in the morning, and then we're also gonna take a train today. But we're gonna walk about 29 kilometers. Just one of those days here on the Chicago Hen. I better hurry up. Six fortunate Henros got on the boat and we rode that ferry for six stops. The guy had impeccable timing making all the stops right on time. The landscape in the region is just incredible and combining it with the ocean, oh my god. Just one hour on it and it was uh, more than enough. We got like 37 kilometers following the official path to the next temple, but I'm gonna take an alternative one that goes more through the mountains. It's probably gonna take me about the same time, but it's more backcountry roads, quiet, no pilgrims, because I saw them all following the official path, as I guess most people do. So yeah, following this canal right now, what really took me by surprise was uh, last night's uh, host. The lady showed up to stop number two along the way with uh, two of the hand rows and she waved goodbye at us. It was just an incredible moment. One of those that you can only see here on this pilgrimage. After walking through uh, some agricultural fields and uh, you know, semi-busy road. We finally made it out here to the countryside. And uh, following this solitary road, I've been seeing quite a few signs that I need no Google Translate about throwing trash. And you see these little caves here, and they're full of like old appliances. In the cities and the towns, they're pristine, but out here, sometimes you see trash littering the sides of the roads. That's how it is, you know. This one, regardless, is extremely clean. It's one of the cleanest ones that I've seen so far. We're climbing just a little bit, following this solitary backcountry road with zero traffic. We're gonna visit one of the Bangai temples, the B temples, the Sai temples, more caves with trash. I've seen uh, a few of those already. They kinda look the same. They just don't have a place, the main office for you to get your calligraphy stamp. So that one is uh, kind of like at the halfway point of this mountain range. It's like 10 kilometers with no support, but there was no support on the 10 kilometers on the boat either. There was a small supermarket, just when you get off the boat there, where you can buy stuff, especially if you didn't get anything for breakfast. You can have breakfast there and get supplies for this stretch. Because after this 10 kilometers, there's a small town there where the first train station is located. We kind of left the trains for a while and we're reconnecting with them. What else? I bought so much stuff yesterday at the supermarket. You know what they say, don't go grocery shopping when you're hungry. And yesterday I was starving. So I have uh, leftovers that I'm carrying with me and that's gonna be snack slash brunch slash maybe lunch, we'll see.
9.26 and I just uh, made a quick stop at the V Temple, which looks like it's in ruins and people have taken over it. So this lady cleaning, and there was a sign, do not enter private property. And then I see a bunch of cars in there. And this thing has the vibe. So I'm gonna continue on. Got here so fast, you know, I thought it was gonna be longer. I still don't know if I'm at the top or if now I have to do the descent. At the moment I'm descending. Yesterday I got just enough sleep, I have to say. I went to sleep at 10 o'clock at night after making all the reservations and charging all my electronics and transferring all the footage and on and on and on. And I got at least seven hours of solid sleep until like five in the morning. And then I tossed and turned there a little bit until I decided to just get up, get on the loner bike and make it really quickly to the supermarket. It was still lights out, but I had the light on the bicycle. On the way back, I came across a hand roll that I've been seeing already, I think for the last few days on and off. And he's doing the camping. And he stayed last night in one of the hand roll houses by the side of the river or the ocean or whatever that is. And then uh, the other two hand rolls, the Americans, they stayed, I think, at the same Minchuco that I wanted to stay yesterday that was full, that the only room available was the very expensive suite with like five beds. So this morning they had to cross over the bridge, kind of like what I did yesterday, uh, just to make it to the port for the 710 ferry ride. Yeah, I think I'm gonna get something to eat now because uh, I'm feeling it. I'm feeling the hiker's hunger when I attack my lunchbox. <laughs> We are back in business. We're in town and I have just come across the first uh, train station. So from now on, I can rely on them as I will towards the end of today's stage. Already had a little snack from my lunchbox and I bought a, a drink at a vending machine. But in this town, there are a couple of uh, places that I can get more stuff because once I leave it, there's really nothing until the end of today's stage. And it's kind of early. It is uh, 10.42 in the morning, so I wouldn't be having uh, lunch here. Just grab and go. Let's go. Well, this is officially the first tunnel that I see in a while now, I would say over the last few days. Uh, we managed to avoid a pretty big one by going into the city, but this one I don't think we can avoid it. Or can we? There's a smaller one on this side for pedestrians and cyclists? Efren, I hear you thinking, what is it with eating at all these supermarkets? Well, I have to say every Henro does it. They're convenient. There are plenty of them along the way and unless you can speak uh, fluent Japanese, you know, it is hard to stop at one of the local restaurants and having to communicate with them and order from a menu with no pictures. When I've had the chance to do it, I've done it, but those are far in between. I managed to take out some cash at Lawson. It was only like 50,000 uh, yen. I think it was at 7-Eleven where I could take out 100,000 max. So I'm gonna be taking it out from now on at the 7-Elevens. So yeah, here we go, into the tunnel. Oh, by the way, also, the supermarkets or the convenience stores are the only places where you can throw out your trash. If not, you have to carry with you along the way Maybe you can dispose it at the vending machines, but I think those are supposed to be for the drinks that you get from them. I've done it, I confess. Into the Temple of Dune we go.
Another way to bypass the busy, noisy, smelly tunnels is to uh, take the backcountry road that predates the tunnel in the first place. Now this road is very quiet, it doesn't cut through the mountain, it goes around it and over, and uh, it's not noisy at all, but what it does have is the view. Made it to a was station at 12.50 in the afternoon and just looking at those mountains I decided you know what I'm not crossing that today. I'm done for the day. I'm gonna take the train here and uh, go all the way to Temple 37 and I still don't know whether I'm gonna visit it today or tomorrow or maybe both. Who knows? Yeah beautiful day man. Beautiful day today. Uh, try to avoid the tunnels as much as you can especially if you're doing a shorter day. Let me see how many kilometers I actually walked. 18 kilometers, so not too bad, not too bad at all. I could call it a day here if I could find an accommodation, but there's nothing, everything is booked. At least this train station has an incredible view of the ocean. Nice. I took the train, yes I did, for a few stops and there were three other hand rows in there. That goes to show you the only places that I see the hand rows are in public transportation and we kind of have to out here. I mean, you know how crazy it is with the accommodations, especially this year. <sighs> Some of them have to walk an hour back after they visit, visit 37. Other ones have to go forward for half an hour. I'm taking the train to the next stage and uh, it wasn't my plan to visit the temple today, but if there's something that I learned is when you have the opportunity, you have to grab it because I don't know what's gonna happen. Maybe tomorrow we got bad weather, maybe something happens and I can't come back here. I don't know, just playing it safe. I'll visit it today and it's done with. I can still come tomorrow and visit it if I want it, but at least I'll film it. Yes. Let's go for it because after that I had to run back to the station and take the train to uh, today's uh, accommodation. Temple 37, Iwamotoji, the temple of the rocky roots. In the town of Shimanto, where the crystal clear waters of the Shimanto River wind through the landscape and the Kona Plateau rises 300 meters high, sits the historic temple of Iwamotoji. Its origins trace back to the Tempio era. According to the local legend, the temple's predecessor, Fukuenmanji, was founded by the revered monk Gayoki following the commands of Emperor Shombu. The emperor's intention was to offer prayers for the immediate end of the seven afflictions and the swift arrival of the seven blessings. The temple stood near the Nida Myojin Shrine, about three kilometers from where Iwajotoji stands today. A century later, during the Koni era, Kobodashi, the famed Buddhist saint, visited the sacred site. His presence transformed the area as he divided the Nida Myojin Shrine into five distinct shrines. He enshrined five principal images, each holding deep symbolic power. Fudo Myo, the immovable wisdom king. 
Kenan Bosatsu, the Buddhist Abba who hears the sounds of the world. Amida Niorai, the Buddha of limitless light and life. And Jiso Bosatsu, the earth treasury Buddhist Abba. He also constructed five branch temples, and together with the seven branches of Fukuenma-ji, this became known as the Twelve Fortune Temples. The five shrines collectively became the Nida Five Shrines. During the Tensho era, wars and fires brought destruction, forcing the temples and shrines to lose their prominence. When the temples were rebuilt, their functions were consolidated under Iwamoto-ji granting a control over all the shrines in the region. As the centuries passed, during both the Sengoku and Edo period, Iwamoto-ji thrived, receiving land and support from powerful warlords and feudal lords, solidifying his statue as a center of religious harmony, where Shintoism and Buddhism coexisted. Yet in 1871, the Meiji government's policies aimed at suppressing Buddhism forced the temples to close its doors. But the spirit of Iwamoto-ji endured, and in 1889, it reopened, reclaiming its place in history. In 1978, when the main hall was rebuilt, a unique addition was made. The ceiling became a canvas for 575 paintings from across Japan beautifully depicting scenes of nature and the human experience, creating what is known today as the Ningen Mandala, each brushstroke a testament to the temple's enduring legacy. So this is a Temple 37. I have seen so many videos of these steps with all the inspirational phrases in English and uh, I just didn't think it was 37. I thought it was further down the line. So it was a nice surprise and now it is time of course to uh, head back to the train station after getting my calligraphy stamp here. Wasn't expecting to visit a temple so it's always uh, nice. Yes, what time is it? It's 2.40, so better hurry up. All right, just got off the train. And right after I left the temple, right after I left you guys, I checked on the Google Maps when the next train was, and it was in 12 minutes, so I had to like really rush for the train station. Uh, once I got there, the train just arrived, and it was an express train, so I took uh, three stops and saw tomorrow's stage unfold in front of me. So it was a good call to uh, stop at Temple 37 everything just lined up perfectly with transportation and everything and right now it's 3 30 check-in is at 4 at Casa Garcia that's right Casa Garcia do you think they speak Spanish there I'm really hoping for that walking making my way over there a Lawson right here maybe I can have breakfast tomorrow here on my way to the train station I don't know if uh, where I'm staying Casa Garcia if they're serving dinner or not. Probably not because the price is uh, very inexpensive. So we'll see. Maybe I have to come back to this lesson to get a bite to eat. What a long, long day. So many things happening today. So many modes of transportation. It's just an exciting day from that perspective. And I won't see another temple now for two and a half days. <laughs> That's right. Tomorrow I'm gonna walk back to this place. Then the day after, I gotta take the train a couple of stops and then walk like almost 30 kilometers to uh, Minshuku in between here and Temple 38. And then the next morning, then half of the stage will be to get to the temple and the other half will be to get into town. And I still have everything planned ahead, but I'm not gonna talk about it because, you know, we still got some time. All right, there it is, Casa Garcia. Let's see what awaits me there. Well, here I am in Casa Gracia, na Garcia. <laughs> they showed up at 4.30 no, when okay. check-in was supposed to be at four and my mind was racing. I was freaking the okay. F out. I'm like, what's going on here? The bike shop says closed for the season and I'm like, 
No. It's okay, don't worry. So I got my phone and I was you're looking here. at hotels <laughs> in the area, which they're not that many and they're very expensive. And I thought if they don't show up, I'm just gonna get on a train, go to like a major city up north and rethink the whole pilgrimage and start doing the temples out of order. You know, that's how it goes. Luckily for me, they showed up and now I have this whole okay. Japanese style room to myself okay. for two nights. This is like the common area with One the more? kitchen behind me. Okay. And uh, I'll be doing laundry even though they don't have a dryer since, you know, I'm going to be walking tomorrow. I could probably just leave my clothes hanging here and let them uh, dry. <sighs> Shower time. I'm also getting another bike from them to go to the supermarket. Two bikes in one day, that's good. the sound of that yeah got it at the supermarket I got the bicycle the guy lent it to me and I just made it there uh, during magic hour I went by the Lawson and I decided you know what let's try something else so I went to the supermarket and I did the whole line and I found some beer and I also like this plate of different uh, sushis mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The lady helped me do a couple of bookings this, as soon as I got to uh, the place. So now I'm booked solid almost all the way to Matsay Matsayamo, Matsayumo city. And in that city, I'm going to take at least a couple of days off. I'm even thinking about taking the ferry and going to Hiroshima, coming back, doing the temples in that city slowly since now I have plenty of time. So I'll be hanging out in that city for a while. Uh, what else? What else? Did laundry and uh, I, I thought about getting uh, breakfast, but I think I'm going to get it tomorrow morning because the Lawson is on the way to the train station. So yeah, Dora O'Neill, thank you for this meal. Thank you for being a trail angel. And guys, of course, follow so you can stay in the loop. And I'll see you guys tomorrow at 6. Yeah, let's make it 6 in the morning. See you then.